Hello, tubers. This is Kurt with Edibles and Exotics coming to you from sunny Mesa, Arizona. Today, I'm sitting in front of a blackjack fig. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to air layer this tree because I want to get this branch gone right here. And uh, some of these other ones, I might do air layers. I might just do cuttings on them. But uh, this guy I want gone. I'm trying to grow this tree a specific way. So air layering, it, uh, it's pretty much the same on any tree. The method's the same. Um, you need something to hold a substrate against the branch. Um, there's a lot of misinformation out there. Your main goal here is uh, just like if you were doing cuttings, you need the whatever substrate, media, whatever you want to call it, soil, dirt. It needs to be moist, like a, uh, a wrung out sponge. So you don't want any water dripping from it. Um, and you don't want it so dry that it's just falling apart like dust. So just, you know, wrung out sponge think of it that way so before you get started on this your best bet uh whatever you're going to use you need to pre-moisten it because once you get the branch prepared and whatever you're using to hold that media prepared soil whatever you want to call it um you need to get it on there really quick you don't want it drying out and scabbing over because then you could have issues with that branch dying so with air layering what you're going to do is you're gonna cut a collar, all right? They call it girdling. So you're gonna take a razor blade and you're gonna cut some of the bark off about an inch, depending on the, the thickness of the branch. The thicker the branch, the more you're gonna to have to cut off. The smaller the branch, the less. But uh, basically what you're trying to do is you're, you're removing that bark and the cambium layer. So the inner and the outer bark, and you're just leaving the white inner part of the branch. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow the roots and the stem to transfer nutrients up into your rooting air layer branch, but it's going to block any nutrients that are coming down, mainly starches from uh, the branch, from the leaves and stuff from going down into the roots of the plant. Instead, it's going to get to the end of where you girdled that branch and those nutrients are going to stay there and it's going to help it develop roots. Basically what you're doing is you are rooting a cutting that's still attached to the tree. Think of it that way. And like I said, any sort of air layer, any sort of tree, they're all pretty much the same. You know, if you're doing a, a fig or a mulberry or anything, anything on a tree, you could be doing stone fruit, you could be doing oak trees, it really doesn't matter. It's all the same. Um, it can be done any time of the year, so right now, like I said, it's in the middle of January and our grow season starts in the beginning of March. So, you know, we got about a little over a month and a half until uh, our grow season kicks off. And uh, so when I do this air layer, it's not going to really put out any roots probably uh, until the middle or the end of March. So it's going to be stuck on here for at least that long. So you got to think ahead if you don't want to have... Uh, you know, a, a, an air layer pot or whatever you're using clamped around that branch, you know, with no leaves on the tree, you know, if you think it looks ugly or whatever, you might want to wait until the springtime when the plant starts putting out leaves. But uh, the reason I'm doing it now, as opposed to in the summer is in the summer here, it gets very hot. So even wrapping my uh, air pods or Ziploc bags or whatever method I use onto that branch with uh, wrapping it with uh, tin foil, it still has a tendency to dry out. So usually halfway through the process, I'm in there with a, a little syringe injecting water into the pod to help it stay moist. Um, so when it comes to whatever soil substrate, whatever you're gonna use, um, like I said, there's a lot of misconceptions out there that you shouldn't use this or you shouldn't use that. There's, there's pros and cons with either one. Um, like I said, you could use damp paper towels if you want. Um, you could use straight peat moss, you could use straight perlite, you could use potting soil, you could use seed starting mix, you could use regular dirt. I wouldn't recommend using clay soil um, unless you mix a bunch of amendments in there. Um, something sterile, just like if you're doing cuttings, is probably going to be your best bet because, you know, if, if you put something around there and it's got some sort of fungus or something in it, it, it could wind up rotting your cutting, especially if it's a little too moist. Um, and then uh, things like peat moss, you know, peat moss holds a lot of water, but once it dries out, it's very hard to rehydrate. So a lot of people don't recommend peat moss. Um, I use my seed starting mix. 
and that seed starting mix is basically uh 50 percent peat moss 25 percent perlite 25 percent vermiculite and then just a little potting soil thrown in and uh like i said it's got to be pre-moistened before you do this so i usually uh put it in a bucket run the hose over it get it nice and moist mix it up wait maybe a half hour to an hour and uh and then i start the process so enough talking i'm gonna show you exactly how i do this it's a really simple quick process so let's get started okay guys so this is a rooting pod off of amazon whatever you want to call it they call it by a bunch of different names this one's black plastic on both sides which is kind of the pain in the neck because what happens with these is you can't see through so to be able to check the roots this you're gonna have to cut the zip ties off of this because even though it's got a little lever to close it and hold it closed you always got to put zip ties around it because when this branch is rooting out if this guy twists one way or the other that's going to break all your new roots off and that could happen it happens really easily sometimes wind sometimes birds cats you brush up against it your kids are playing in the yard and something happens so it needs to be clamped pretty tightly around there and that'll also hold in more moisture so they do sell these where half is clear half is black or sometimes they're green on both sides doesn't matter just non-see-through um, sometimes they're clear on both sides but what i recommend is wrapping the whole thing in tin foil and in the winter it's not too big of a deal but in the summer if you don't wrap it with tin foil something like this black or even clear it's going to act like a greenhouse and this could heat up to uh you know 150 180 degrees and that's going to cook your cutting or air layer and it's just not going to take it's, gonna, it's more than likely going to die um so this is all i have left i got numerous air layers throughout the yard on different trees and so i got a couple of these i got some smaller ones they're very uh they're, the sizes vary on these so this is a medium they do have a smaller one and they do have a larger one but basically to uh size it properly we're gonna put this guy somewhere like right about here so you just want to make sure that this pod fits snugly around that branch it doesn't have to be super tight doesn't have to be super loose but just close enough and uh the other thing you're gonna need is a razor blade you're gonna need some small zip ties or if you're doing a Ziploc bag, you're going to need bigger ones. I'll show that to you in a minute. Then you're going to need uh, tin foil. This is cheapo Walmart tin foil. I would recommend getting some heavier duty tin foil. Um, and then you need your substrate. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see. And we're going to get this guy air layered with this Amazon rooting pod, air pod, whatever you want to call it. All right, guys. So basically what we're going to do this has a little finger in here and that's gonna when you clamp it that's got one on either side that's gonna dig into the branch and kind of lock it in place it's gonna help you out so it doesn't spin and break those roots but what we're gonna do we're gonna figure out exactly where we want this you have to leave room here to be able to trim this branch off because once this guy roots out you're gonna snip this off you're going to open up the air pod and you're going to put it into a pot of dirt and let it root out some more and fill that pot. So this is about good enough. Um, you don't want to go too close because you are going to have to wrap this with tin foil also. So you want to leave a little bit of room. Um, where you place this pod in relation to these nodes, it really doesn't matter. All these little white dots on here are capable of growing roots. Um, so, you know, we're probably going to put this guy somewhere like right about here. All right. And we're gonna we're gonna cut this off here and you want your cut to be about a third of the way down into this pod you don't want it in the middle and you don't want it at the top because the roots are going to come out of this side here and you know our strip bark is going to be somewhere here but we also don't want the strip bark hanging out here because then it's just going to dry out and die so right about here would be good we're going to cut off probably somewhere around here we're going to girdle it and let me get started on that and show you exactly how to do that so for reference i'm going to hold the the pod in place so we're just going to go somewhere right about here all right we'll just strip a little off so we know where our cut is 
and we're going to go somewhere right about here. Okay. So now take the pot away. And what we're going to do is we're going to run this razor blade all the way around this branch, right? Be careful. You don't cut your fingers off. You're not good with razor blades. Maybe, uh, have someone help you. That is someone that maybe uses them for a living or whatever. Um, but we're not going to go too deep. We're just going far enough to get through the outer bark and that inner cambium layer. And the cambium layer is going to be that green layer directly under the bark. Okay. So you see it's oozing the sap. That's okay. So now we're just going to skin it right up to our two cuts. Okay. So you can see the outer bark's brown. The inner bark is that green layer right there. We want to get down to this woody layer. That's what we're looking to do. All right. The goal here is to get all that green away because if that green layer connects this to this, you may not get roots. All right. You could also air layer without stripping the bark. People have done it. Um, some people have great success with it. Other people don't. So if you're scared of razor blades, maybe uh, try it without it and see what happens. But basically, we're going to strip this around. Sometimes when you cut these, it'll peel off like a nice little collar, but in the winter, you can't get it with your fingernail. So usually in the summer is when it's really uh, easily separated. Got to move around here and try to get this cut off. All right. Peel these off. around we're going to scrape some of this cambium off of here whatever's left all right you just got to make sure double check before you uh put your air layering pod or ziploc or however you're going to do it on there and make sure all this cambium is disconnected and the outer bark. There's a little more on the back side. Yes, there is. All right. I think we are all the way around. All right, that's it, guys. We're going to fill up our air pod, or air layering, rooting, whatever you want to call it. All right, so we got our soil in there. We're going to push it down slightly. All right. You don't want any soil where these flat parts are. It is going to fall out. It's going to be a bit of a pain when you go to clamp it. But if you have any sort of soil on any of these flat parts, when you go to put it together, it's not going to want to close right. So again, our little fingers are down here that are going to dig in. So we're just going to find where we want to put this. All right. Somewhere like right about there. So our roots are going to come out of here. So we can get that guy right about there. That way the roots come out and see right there. Roots come out, they can fill the ball and they're going to, not only are they going to go that way and down, they're going to, they're going to wrap around the whole thing, kind of get root bound. So that guy's in there. We're going to smush this together, clamp it and it's on there. You see, it's kind of loose. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some zip ties and we're going to put them. I usually just put them on these inner holes here just so it clamps it tighter around the branch. All right. That guy's on there. That guy's on there. If 
these on there and the last one so I usually just use four and it should be pretty good all right so that's on there we're gonna go around and we're gonna snip these off as close as possible because we don't want it cutting into the tin foil and we wrap it with the tin foil let's get this guy right here just snip him off okay so this is on there pretty good it's snug i mean i i can't twist it right now and before i did the zip ties it would twist if you made it twist so it doesn't matter which seam is up or down i usually do it like that like kind of like a taco with the latch on the top just because it's easier um, if you have it laying flat and you try to flip the top over a lot of that media from the top is going to want to fall out on the ground get in between the flat spots and not give you a good seal so usually what i do is i just get a piece of tin foil probably uh about that long for something this size. I just get it around there, centered, wrap one side, fold it over, give it a little twist, do the other side. Just twist it a little bit, kind of like a baked potato. That's basically it. You don't want to squeeze too much around the pod because the sharp edges could actually uh, dig into your tin foil and poke holes in it and then it might dry out. So there you go guys. That's how baked potatoes are grown on a tree. So we'll just let that bake at uh, around 375 for about an hour. Put some butter on it, some chives and we'll have a yummy dinner. Alright guys, so I'm standing in front of a brown turkey fig and you can see there's uh multiple baked potatoes all over this sucker i said in another video that i changed my mind after planting this a few years ago that i don't want it here anymore so i've got a couple of air layers on it um these ones down here these are the ziploc bag air layers and uh i don't have any more trees that i need to do big branches like this on so i'm just going to peel this one apart and i'm going to show you exactly what it looks like and then I'll show you how to prepare the bag if you want to do a uh, Ziploc bag air layer if you want to do it on the cheap. So let's get into this. I'll get a little close up for you and you'll see exactly what it looks like. Okay, so this one's been wrapped in tin foil. And basically all you got to do I did three larger zip ties to hold it in place. But this is just a Ziploc bag. You can see the zipper runs this way. And uh, literally, I just filled up a bag. Uh, not super, super packed in there, but just filled it up. I, I girdled the branch where I wanted it. Uh, I put a slit down the Ziploc bag. And then I just opened it up a little bit, folded it over, and I put these zip ties on, clamped it on, and then tinfoiled it. And... That's a air layer on the cheap. If you don't want to use a rooting pod, um, there's a lot more soil in here. So when this branch puts out roots, since it's a thicker branch, it's got more space to put out roots. All right, guys. So like I said before, I don't have any larger branches that I really want to air layer or really any branches right now. I got so many going. So I would like to show you how to do the Ziploc bag method instead of buying air layering pods off Amazon or eBay or wherever you want to get them. But uh, basically you take a Ziploc bag, you fill it up with dirt. You don't want it bulging. You want it, you know, just a little full, right? You zip it, leave a little space at the end, push all the air out as much as you can zip it the rest of the way, right? Make sure it's good and tight. You don't want this guy popping open. So just double check it. Okay. So now what we're going to do, we're going to take a razor blade, and we're just gonna run it down the center, okay? Just through the top of the bag, not all the way through to the bottom, all right? Now, demonstration-wise, this is easy because I'm doing it horizontally to the ground, so it's it's level, makes it really easy. If you got a branch that's sticking straight up, you might need two people to help you do it. If it's 
45, you could probably swing it on your own. If it's this way, it's going to be super easy. So basically what you're going to do, you're going to take this, pretend this is the branch we're, we're air layering, right? We're going to dig it in like that. We're going to peel this open a little bit. And we're going to try to get this dirt to surround our branch where we girdled it. Okay. That's it. Just like that. So we got kind of like a hot dog and a bun right there. Super easy, right? And then we're just going to take these zip ties and we're going to start. Sometimes it's easy if you get these started on the bottom of the branch and then you could just slide them up. You don't have to try to hold it and zip them together, but you're just going to zip this guy together, zip, and then you're going to do, I don't want to waste these because <laughs> they cost a lot of money, but uh, yeah, you just zip all three and then you're going to, you're going to take it and you're just going to wrap the whole thing in tin foil like we did with the air layering pods. And that's how you do the Ziploc bag method. And the good thing about this method is a, it's cheap. You can get Ziploc bags anywhere. Um, it is a little more difficult because you don't have the pods to hold the dirt in. You can't really pack it in too well. Sometimes you need two people to do it. Uh, you know, an extra set of hands. Um, maybe you have your spouse, your, your kids or a friend come over and just give you a hand for a few minutes. But the good thing about this is the bags are cheap and they're not really reusable once you do this, um, but you can see the roots develop in there. So you can just peel back your tin foil, and you know right away, you know, in a month or two or whenever um, that, you know, you got roots. You could also see um, how moist it is, you know, since it's got this little slit, you could probably pull it apart a little bit and see if, if the moisture is down and you have to add more. Um, you know, it's very easy to do um, with this. If, if you have to add moisture to these, um, you could actually uh, peel a little part of this Ziploc bag open and you could just stick a, a syringe in there or squirt it with a squirt bottle or run the hose very gently in there just to get a, a little more moisture. Um, if you fill it up with too much moisture, you could always poke a hole in the bottom at the lowest point, let the moisture run out and then just put a piece of tape over it. Um, so they are very, very forgiving in that that respect a lot more uh, forgiving than the pods but uh, i do a lot of air layering so i don't like wasting bags and stuff like that so i usually i have a pretty good stock of uh, rooting pods but for the larger air layers like i said i do use the bags just because trying to find a an air layering pod that's the size of like a basketball or something is uh just not not practical and it's going to cost a bunch of money and you know, if you need four or five of them, it's it's just not going to work out. You know, you're going to spend more money buying these stupid pods than you are uh, on the plant that you're trying to grow. So that's basically it. Uh, again, this is Kurt with Edibles and Exotics. Um, please don't forget to uh, like, subscribe, share, hit the bell, all that goody kind of stuff. And comment at the bottom. I love hearing from you guys. If there's any sort of other videos you want, uh, let me know. Uh, if you want my opinions on things, I'm, I'll be glad to do it. I usually respond pretty quick. Uh, love talking to uh, viewers and fans. I'll do a little update in a couple of months, uh, probably in about a month, month and a half, when uh, you know the air layer on the fig starts taking and a couple of the others, and I'll show you how I pot them up. And you know that's kind of the make or break moment when you pot them up. If you do it wrong, you kill your air layer, and all that work just went down the tube. So. I'm going to show you guys how to do it right and uh hopefully you'll have a uh, great success just like i do and uh you know like i said before th this method works on pretty much any woody tree so if it's got bark and uh you want to clone it and you're scared about doing cuttings or you want a, a bigger tree right off the bat air layering is the way to go